All right, Gabe, head of the Gordian Sons for Galveston Classic 2023 captain's meeting. What's your thoughts on the week so far? It's been a grind, but uh, you know how we roll. We find them. Yep, we we find them. them, you know. Takes some looking. Probably over 100 miles. It's just about. And west to cover. Covering the and coast. Then tomorrow we're going to cover another probably 40 miles east of where we've been. Just about pushing the border of it and uh yeah it's been a struggle this week we got high temp record high temps this week we have i would say our climate is about a month behind our normal summer as far as rainfall and temperatures our and tides then, are a little funky <laughs> yeah super high south winds so the tides aren't dropping we're about Today we were eight to nine inches above predictions, which if the wind lays, it'll drop, but I don't think it's gonna lay. Where last year laid, messed us up at one spot, second yeah. day. But the cool part about this is we have probably 20 to 30 Sabine customers. So we get to hang out, get to get some FaceTime. Sabine customers have won it twice in the past five years. We're gonna fish Carbon 01, Owen and Flounder are gonna fish Carbon 02, and then we'll have somewhere between 10 to 20 aluminum uh, Sabines in the tournament. So it's gonna be a good one. We got 50 teams, Gordian Sons, it's 527. Captain's meeting starts at six. We're scheduled to be there about 6.30. <laughs> Oops. And welcome to the 2023 Galveston Classic, Woo! year seven. Thank you guys for signing up. And uh, more importantly than you guys, thank you to our sponsors who make this possible. You guys are super important too. We're gonna do the same thing we do every year. If you've fished this tournament before, you will be pretty familiar. There's a couple of rule updates. All right, one thing that's different this year, uh, lines in at 5.53 a.m. You're welcome. All you people that like to get out there early and uh, were mad at me last year because redfish were slurping shrimp and you were sitting in your boat looking at your watches, this is for you. Winter lines out. There's no lines out this year. What? You can fish all day. I don't care. You just have to be in line no later than 5.30 p.m. at Harbor Walk looking me in the eyeball telling me that you're there. All fishing must be done from a boat, no wave fishing. Fly fishing only, obviously. Anglers may fish anywhere from the Colorado River to the Texas boundary of Sabine Lake. Texas slot redfish, 20 to 28 inches. Um, this is how the state of Texas measures redfish. Uh, we're gonna measure to the nearest eight on your provided ruler. Um, if you're in between, you're gonna round up to the nearest eight. So if you are over that 28 inch line, it's disqualified. Fish are measured from the tip of the nose, so punch that, you know, slide that fish up to where the nose butts against the end of the ruler and pinch the tail. All right? All right, well, if you don't have any questions or if you're too embarrassed, too embarrassed to ask your questions, just grab just to me and ask later. But thank you guys so much. I'm going to get some Uh oh. My nervous vomits. I will likely throw up. <coughs> some boy. Nervous. This <laughs> oh boy, you gotta get this on film. <laughs> this is a ritual for Brian. That's why, you, yeah. The only way you know we're on fish. Get this bottom. Fuck. I get to oh, a parking man. lot. This old girl. Uh. <laughs> what the fuck? Is Oh. Let it rip. <laughs> Let it rip. <laughs> Alright guys. It is Thursday before the 2023 Galveston Classic. Uh, just picked up the Carbon 01 from the shop. Looks like we're going to end up fishing it. Uh, which means 
probably not fishing a bunch of oysters. Maybe, maybe not. But yeah, we're gonna head out, look at plan B or plan C today. Teller, in front of us? Yep, I see him. Hold on, let me turn you a little bit more. You're behind him, let me get you a little bit more upwind on him. Here, try that. Strip? He's going away now. There's another one 20 feet behind yeah, him. Yeah, I saw that. Okay, you're casting it five feet in front of that. Fish that, you lined him. Keep it coming, keep it coming, you're right on him. Okay, five feet to the right now. Fish that. Nope, five feet to the left. Let's try that, you might get him. Oh, there he is. Fish snow, Just slightly off. He's going right again now. Yes, sir. Go. Hold on. He's turning left now. All right, I get see, him. I He's got about it. Fish that. Strip fast. Fast. He's looking for it. Pop it on him. Drag it. Drag it. Send another one. Pop it on him. There you go. Motherfuck. Another one that looked even yeah, bigger. Yeah, I saw that other one was just as big. We don't have a lot of easy fish. Um, we have two spots. Both of them are super small. One has good grass in some areas. Some of it's muddy. And then uh, Plan B is super duper small, but it has good fish in it. And we spent about 45 minutes in it this morning. Uh, landed a 27 and a 30. A little backstory how Gabe and I met, and because this is either our fourth or fifth classic. Yeah, it's not fourth. Fourth, I think. Fourth one to fish. No, fifth. Yeah, yeah, this is our fifth classic to fish, and we really only started fishing about a month before the first classic that we fished together. So I'll let Gabe tell how we met and uh, know how this team come about. So before I got into fly fishing, uh, I was at a boat dock one day here in Bayou Vista and uh, Brian had happened to go and water test one of the first micros. My brother went up to him and decided to talk to him about that micro and long story short, he went on a ride with it and he came back after that test run and uh, was bragging about how that skiff went real shallow and the coolest sights, you know, on that little skiff and that kind of sparked an interest in me with fly fishing and a uh, little down the road, I'm fishing some lights Thermos fly, some speckled trout, and here comes Brian and one of the demo skiffs, uh, versatile, with one of the managers from a fly shop. And he had mentioned to Brian that, hey, that guy comes in all the time. He's on fish. And Brian yeah, ended up sending me a message. He said talked to Gabe on these certain lights for probably about five or ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it kind of took off from there. I mean, mainly through social media, we talked, and he said he needed a new tournament partner. The guy he was going to fish with had to back out, some emergency. and. I was all for it. I uh, never fished a fly tournament in my life, but I was very eager to, you know, wanted to get in more involved in the community. I kind of was just doing it for fun. Never really thought about taking it to uh, the competitive side and met a few guys before that tournament actually fishing a lot of the same back lakes, Sabine guys, and they kind of, little the group was a little bit smaller at the time, so kind of took me in as a honorary Sabine guy and uh, ended up fishing with Brian after oh. that. So the one thing that I like to be before a tournament is prepared. We'll go through the boat. Right now we only have a rod apiece because today we might not even cast out a fish. We might just look at them. Tournament day, uh, I'm going to have two rods. You're going to have two? I'm going to have two. So I fish nine weights uh, mainly during these tournaments. I know it's overpowering. I'm not an eight weight person. so. My summertime pond fishing for redfish is a seven weight. That's my setup. For, for the tournament, I'll just stick with nines, mainly because you don't know if you're going to have a 15 mile an hour wind, 20 mile an hour wind, or nothing. You can still fish a nine weight. I have a, uh, my go to rod right now is a two year old Thomas and Thomas with a Nautilus reel, super lightweight. 
my other nine weight is more for bull reds. Um, it's a one piece G Loomis uh, with a Mako reel. So it's that reel is way <laughs> overpowered for these small redfish, but that's just a setup I have. Reel is heavier than a Nautilus, but it is a good and balanced rod. I will likely throw the, um, I will have a go-to uh, fly on the first rod. The second rod might not have anything on it. And I'll just use it if line goes bad or something like that. Cocky SOB might have it tied on the one piece G Loomis, but usually once we go with that fly, we'll actually just tie it on our favorite rod. Um, go ahead and talk about you. So a superstitions, uh, I wouldn't say I'm terrible on them. I do get go a lot with my intuition on the gut feeling. You know, if I'm not feeling something, I won't, I won't fish it. I like to say I'm unprepared in some scenarios to kind of not set myself up for success. And for whatever reason, it kind of works out. Like for example, uh, I don't like to leave a net out on the deck. Say we're having fish around and we're catching them left and right. The net always goes back in the hatch, it never stays out. Cause for whatever reason, the universe is like, all right, you're getting cocky. The fishing will slow we'll, down. We'll probably put the net in the cockpit after the third fish or something. So, and then there's there's a net deal, and then I don't like to carry pliers on my hip. You know, I've got some fancy pliers, but they stay in the hatch too. Uh, yeah. Kind of. I don't know. Odd. I, I it's have a weird one, at all but time, uh, so. it's what works for me. I've tested it out. I've had people on the boat with me, and they've noticed the same thing, and they know I'm not crazy about it. And I, they say I'm on to something. And one other thing is. It's kind of goofy, but my good luck charm is I always have a big blue yeah. or big red on the boat. Yeah. And we always start off with a big trip. red. I always have a big red, but he likes big blue. So I would say I'm not real superstitious, but I will enjoy a big red in the morning. Yeah, I mean, I don't, it, I don't eat a lot. If and, we're not drinking one, it's got to be in the cooler. It's a, uh, it's a little good luck charm, and it's kind of how I roll. But as far as that, like, got a lucky hat, uh, got some lucky shirts, but that's just our little superstitions yeah. and. Day one of the Galveston Classic. We got about 10 minutes before lines are in. The marsh is starting to come alive. Shrimp and mullet busting around us. A few reds. Two of them just took off right here. What do you call a gar that's in fresh water? Gar. What do you call a gar in the salt? Gar. Seagar. <laughs> Seagar. <laughs> oh, I thought I saw one to the left of that. Got him? Good fish? Yep. Good fish. Good fish. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, he's over. 26 and a half. Yeah, get that half point. Here, I need you to cock your head to the left. There you go. Move Pete's backpack a little bit to the right so it kind of doesn't distort. There you go. Perfect. All right. Lay your left hand under the belly. Okay, just get that half point. God damn it. I can't see. All right, right there. Got it? Yeah. Eight thirty-five. Good job, Gabe. Ten o'clock, day one. Got a twenty-six and a half. A couple of small ones. Saw a few more. It's kind of slow. Hey guys, day one, Galveston Classic. We just left our first spot, thought we were going to stay there all day. We needed good sun, we knew that, we weren't getting our sun. Uh, we are now moving zip codes, going to a second spot. 
Got a major going to kick off here in about 30 minutes. We'll be in that spot in about an hour. We'll fish the major through, probably leave around 3 o'clock. Oh, right here, 9 o'clock. Fish that. It's a buffalo. It's a buffy. Keep stripping, keep stripping. Let it sink. It's a buffy. We got the leaderboard behind us over here. Uh, looks like we got two teams that are really contending against each other. Uh, Brad and Ryan, 328 inch fish. That's pretty hard to beat. Yeah, That's pretty, pretty epic. And then uh, obviously Clay and Owen in second place right now with 83 inches. Yeah, 83 and a quarter, 84 is leading. Uh, there's a few 50s because they brought two fish in. Staten and Jacob got 70 inches because they got three fish, but they got two smalls, so kick them smalls out. So we're still in contention, but we're battling for third or fourth right now, maybe second. Tomorrow's going to be a struggle for us, only because of where we were today, didn't turn out. So we're probably going to punt big tomorrow. We, we still have some other spots we tree fished, but yeah, tomorrow's going to struggle. I mean, if you look at this leaderboard, there's a lot of zeros, a lot of goose eggs. So we're glad to bring one fish in. Because of how tough it is, our goal was to bring two fish in. So we got a lot to make up. Tomorrow's gonna be a different day. I don't know if y'all can hear me, but it doesn't matter. I'm here with Captain Owen Gaylor, Clay Guest, AKA Flounder, Tarpon Guy. And uh, they had a good day. Dave and I had a struggle. I caught one fish, but I'm going to hand it over to them and let them talk about their day. Uh, it was kind of exciting. Yeah. Yeah, really exciting day. Clay, you want to take it? Or? Well, I, if, if I got to take it and give all honors, you have to do that to Owen because the guys on the back of this boat and this boat in general made us do some incredible things and some stuff that we didn't think would be able to put us in the position. It's, it's day one going into a very long term with 50 fantastic anglers, some guys that really know what they're doing in their own backyards. And I feel like one of the reasons we're sitting in the positions we are is because of this new Sabine and, and what that carbon can do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the day went pretty good. We rolled to our spot, showed up to our spot about 7 o'clock. No need in starting any earlier. Just another day of work for me and a fun day to fish for him. It's a vibe we carried through the tournament. And, uh, you know, there's a little tension there with some sunlight, losing, losing fish due to clouds. A um, little bit of murk in the water today. Um, but ended up probably about 12 o'clock we felt pretty confident in the fish that we had and uh, decided to come on home not pick on the fish any longer than we had to. Uh, Clay made some wonderful shots. Uh, he's seeing the fish really good which helps so much um, so I can focus on kind of long How many fish did he miss? I would say he stuck three fish at 27 and 3 eighths, 27 and 3 quarters and 28 which unfortunately isn't enough right now to win this tournament. But you're probably second place. But we're probably right. sitting, sitting pretty position. comfortable in second. Um, I think Flounder for sure missed one fish, uh, but it was still a technical shot. Fish kind of going away, but she turned. We don't really have to put that on video. But I mean, I'm just saying. He did right after that fish was he picked himself up. He stuck a fish and then pulled around the corner and then stuck the next fish, which was our perfect 28. So everybody misses fish. If they say they don't, they're a liar. Got to give Flounder a hard time. They yeah, can't catch every them all, chance we get. Today, well, he almost caught them all. Well, the, re the reason we already are, look, is, is for what you do and the boats you build. I'm a Sabine owner myself. I own one of these. I have a fantastic person on the back of the boat who makes this easy. I mean, you guys are the guys who make this happen. Sabine and Owen are the guys who make this stuff like this happen. And Absolutely. you guys are, it's incredible of what y'all are doing and putting out there, so. What are you, uh, day two, going into it? What, what's y'all's goal? What are, you, what are you trying to do? No, nah, we, we're in second so, place. We got to catch up. I mean, so, it's, yeah. we're playing catch up. That's what we're doing. We're, we're uh, you know. We got a little time clock. I, I'm not able to fish as long as we'd like. Got a little family vacation. Uh, looking forward to that. So we really got to push hard the first thing in the morning and after lunch we get about an hour to make it happen and uh, hopefully that's enough but we caught three fish and we told you the sizes so we're on the right ones. Yeah, stay tuned. Let's see how uh, Owen and the Clowner do. Stay tuned.
Yeah. Guys, good luck. Nice, brother. Thanks, man. Thank you.